Hello, hello, welcome to Let's Talk Real Estate and Stuff. Man, Pop Pete's internet is horrible, but that's all right. Blurry preacher out in the internet there, but welcome everybody. Um, if you're not following us, please go subscribe on YouTube so you get the notifications for these lovely videos. Got an exciting episode today. We'll, uh, we'll kick it off with some uh, uh, updates. How, how's life going, guys? Anything exciting happening? Papa P, rap to us. Can you hear us? Can you see us? Um, is, my internet, is my internet bad? Please. We got the, the video. Is video's a, horrible. Yeah, the video is a little, little off, off kelter there. But we're good. I'm good. Good week. Getting ready for a couple back-to-back -back travel events, wholesaling live in San Antonio. If you fun. guys are, yeah, if you guys are there was talking to somebody in Texas who's hopefully buying a ticket that just getting started wholesaling. Um, so hopefully we'll see him there. A place to go get inspired by that. It is. It is. Uh, they got some good speakers there as well. If you guys check out wholesaling live.io, I believe is the link Brady from the carrot team speaking there. I saw they just added Mike Hambright who will be speaking for investor machine, RJ Bates. We'll see some investor fuse cup customers there like Aaron Bevins. Um, so I'm excited getting ready for that. And then have family mastermind the week after that. So getting some things in order on the home front here, just in the office, knocking some things out, and then we'll be on the road a little bit. Very nice. It'd be great for you to travel where you can actually walk. Yeah, yeah, it's another thing. Got the brace off, so I'm I have no brace, no crutches. I'm just really letting my hair down this uh this week here. So excited for it. Well, I don't have good news. Oh, no. no, no. I, was, I was waiting to hear. I was waiting to hear. You know, I've been a big proponent, you know, of, like, just being real with things. So, like, I've been pretty active on Twitter recently and sending them over to Instagram, which I have noticed, by the way, getting off on a side tangent. Whenever I started sharing my tweets on Instagram, my engagement has gone way down who they're showing my stories to. Cause like I, I have the same like hundred or whatever, some people like watching my stories, you know, every day. And then like, I start showing my tweets and sharing my tweets. And I find it funny because I feel like they're doing it cause of threads and they're noticing that I'm doing that. My engagement will be like eight fucking people for like a whole day. And I just know from all my other posts that I share and when I used to just, cause I used to type Whatever I tweet now, I used to just type in the Instagram content story thing. And I was like, well, why am I doing that? I'll just do it on tweets. And ever since I started doing that and sharing it, I've noticed Zuckerberg has been like, nah, bro, you're not using threads. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's not you a – I don't think that's a coincidence. Was it – I think we were talking about here or I heard on somewhere, TikTok literally has part of their staff that just watches videos and they choose who to make – go make viral. I believe like it. Literally I, just put, listen, they, I got no they, complaints they, with they TikTok. Play, I love they it. play the strings of just like who they want yeah. to, to blow up and like they just choose to reward people. They're kind of just like knight people or king made yeah. people. Um, exactly. But yeah, that's not um, coincidental that if you're not using, you know, threads or the, the correct platform, they'll kind of. They'll kind yeah, of especially uh, since I'm sharing it over. Mm -hmm. So like, I don't know if people saw, but I posted, you know, I was like, so I had sent out Man, listen, like I had, so this guy has had, he's had his park on the market since like March. This is the one that has gone through a wholesaler to has had people. I'm like the fourth guy. Everyone else has backed out um, or like changed their mind or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, like he was considering seller finance. So like I had brought, he wanted like 1.45 long story short, went out there, met him, made my offers. He countered me back. I countered him back. He didn't like my counter. So then he had another buyer they were going to sell it to. Well, that buyer found another deal. I'm still waiting around. So last week I sent, I was like, Hey, listen, like we're a thousand dollars apart on a monthly payment. Let's meet in the middle. You would think like, that would be pretty much fucking it. I'm giving non-refundable deposit, all this stuff. So I was making a strong offer because I like the part. I just do. It, mm -hmm. it, I, I had a gut feeling about it. Um, and it's all private utilities, private well, private septic, which in the mobile home park game, people don't like, but I don't mind because that's my background in Florida. We have a lot of that down here in Polk County. Anyway, he's supposed to get back to me Friday. Friday, he's like, 
Friday, he's like, well, can you send me it officially on paper instead of just through my agent? So the agent told me, so I sent him a formal updated LOI. Tuesday comes along. He says, no. He says, hey, he told the realtor. And the realtor's like, do you have a reason why? And the realtor's like, no, nah, I don't. Or the guy was like, no, just put it back on the market. He's like, so do you want to walk through his LOI line by line? Tell me what you don't like. I'll get him to change it. And the guy's like, no, just put it back on the market. The realtor yeah. called me and told me that. And I was like, you know what I feel like? I feel like he's just put me on ice because I've been sitting around for like so long. Like he just thinks he can get a higher offer. He was asking one point. Mm-hmm. We had agreed upon a million dollars. I've got him down half a mil. Um, he wants 50% down, so let's put half a mil down. Um, so, But I think he still thinks he could get the 1.4. And it's like, fine, bro, put your house back on, put the park back on the market. Like, I'm not, you know, because if he had a problem with it, he would have straight up said, I don't like this, I don't like this, I don't like mm-hmm. this. It's not right. You just say he told the realtor, uh, no, thank you, just put it back on the market, meaning he thinks he can do better which is mind-boggling because he's had like four other people walk this property and back the fuck out and it's like so anyway i thought i was gonna get that one and i did not i did not i really thought that that's the one where like the agent was the first time doing this and they didn't realize that they had a wholesaler that was the buyer Mm -hmm. okay that that part he's a good guy man listen like i have been negotiating through him so like i have been walking him through like my seller finance stuff like how i write the loi like it's all possible through a realtor you want to know why it's not that he has any experience per se in parks or anything like that but it was he was just willing it was excited he was going to double end it you know what i mean like i was communicating with him so we were on like a team he was he was a transaction broker so both ends of the deal so like he was representing me as well so i mean i had no problems negotiating my seller finance stuff I was just extremely surprised that me and the the seller had gotten to every single term with the exception of monthly payment. We were a thousand bucks apart. I say to split it in the middle. And he's like, and he said, no, no, nah, bro. So there's something else, you know what I mean? And that's fine. Yeah. He wants to put it back on the market. I'm looking at one and I just made an LOI in Alabama. I'm getting some details on one up in Kansas and I'm just going to keep moving. Ooh, Kansas. Bro, Kansas is Kansas ain't bad. Kansas, Topeka. Topeka. Interesting. Interesting. So well, you'll get one. Yeah. Doing all well, the right not, activity for it. But it goes I love back it. to what I was saying about being real. It's like, you know, like I was watching the uh, uh, guru influencer and they're like buying another, buying another rental, buying <laughs> another this. And they're like, here's my house. And it's like, that's cool and everything. But like, what about all the ones you didn't get? Mm-hmm. What about like, what about all the offers you made and didn't succeed? And like, that's what you don't see anymore. And it's like, you know, they just show you the highlight reel. No one's like, bro, like I've been rejected. Like I'm at least posting like got rejected again, got rejected again. You know, it'll happen a few more times. So, yeah, it will. Um, I had some interesting conversations around A2P this week. So we talked oh, last week about wait, A2P wait, wait, wait. coming down. I want to yeah. say this publicly. John, you mm-hmm. were right. You were right. Oh, boy. Thank you. Thank you. You were right. They shut my texting oh. down. They shut my texting down. <laughs> oh, so you were right. Low volume or not. I just I meant to tell you that the other day when we were meeting. But there you go. It's it's fully public. You were right. I was wrong. They shut that shit down. And it's messed my business up. Like now I'm scrambling. I can't text off my smartphone. Oh, I've been, I haven't been texting either. It's messed our mobile. It's messed our mobile home park stuff up. My PPC leads because I double tap, 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 text. I can't now do the tap, tap, text. It's jacked all of our shit up right now. So but like, you put it in on the last Friday call, right? Yeah, they rejected that. They rejected that one. Interesting. Did they so give you a reason done, why? No, I've done two more. Um, and I don't think there are problems. Papa, anyway, Papa P's just Papa P's just getting rejected on deals left and right here and not getting feedback. Why? Like give throw my man a bone here. Tell him tell him what he needs to do. <laughs> but through the rejection, has happened to me. I, endure. I endure and I move forward I know. through all the oh, rejection. 100%. The the good thing is is the campaign approval goes a lot faster than business profile approval. So at least you're in that phase where they should accept you soon. I'll, f- I'll find out. I'll find out. I think it might have to be. I think I don't know if Carrot has it. This is a good platform, and I didn't mean to hijack your your moment there, John. But maybe you oh, guys, good. if you know anything, you speak to if Carrot is going to do anything with an opt in section they on the are. website. 
-hmm. Yeah, because I'm going to need, I'm, I'm a carrot user. Everyone knows, go buy your carrot, carrot set. I've been a long-term carrot user. Um, I think that's what it's going to come down to. I've been reading a lot of Facebook and, and messages, and they're all saying that. Um, yeah. Uh, hang on one second. It, it's interesting, though. The people I just talked with, they, same problem. They got shut down, but they don't have an opt-in in their website, and they got approved. I mean, I'm I don't know. I'm, like I'm waiting. Individual people that are like looking at it. So I took your advice, and for the A2P, I did the I did two campaigns. So I did one for our mobile home park tenant stuff, and made that a campaign of like, hey, these are our tenants, blah blah blah. Um, and I gave them messages like, hey, you know, example messages. And then I did the other one of people who call into our company. Like that was yeah. the, what do you call it? The description people call into our company, then ask for a text confirmation verbally, like, Hey, send me your information via text. So I did two of them to see, I don't know. We'll see. Interesting. Well, I'll so my AT Poo, my ATP news is so not only like we were talking, like you're legally tied into what you're sending via the text messages and mm -hmm. they now like are associating your phone numbers and saying, you know, the messages that you're sending are coming from this brand, which makes it easier for them to shut down. So I want to make the point clear that just when you get approved doesn't mean that you're good to go, nothing to worry about. Um, all is hunky dory. So once you get approved, you then need to start watching what you send in your text messages. So I went down a little bit of a rabbit hole this week, kind of looking at some of this, and I need to publicly oh, yeah. publish some of this next week for all Investor Fuse customers. But you in you need to watch what you're sending in uncontacted uh, cust uh, sellers. So you get a new lead in, they submitted a form on your yeah. website, they checked, I want to receive the text messages. You still have to watch what you're sending in those messages to them until the conversation starts happening. Once they're texting you back, then they're like, okay, this person does want to receive these text messages. Uh, you still have to so watch they know that. about language. So the carriers yeah. know that. Yeah, and so there are a lot of spam filters that are being automatically applied to text messaging and being reported back to that phone number. So I have a little list of words here of things that you should not be sending to sellers if they have not messaged you back. Once they message you back um, and they start talking to you, that it's fine to send these verb, these messages, these words. But until that point, do not say Are you, are the you, word. Are you posting it? Are you posting it on the screen right now? Um, I, you I think check? I can. No. Here, let me see. Um, As you're pulling that up, does that include autoresponders? Yes, 100% includes autoresponders. Yeah, fuck yeah. And you know what? Anyone who listened to my advice and did manual follow-up by phone with a follow-up specialist isn't going to be affected by this. So You took a you uh, took an answer to my question. I was going to throw to you guys. What cuz this is a probably a majority of companies is 100% you what, need to what go are you my doing? way. Cuz I yeah. even had to do it too just for some inbound B2B sales. I was like texting Get on the fucking phone. phone. Well, yeah, it's like you know, just talking on your regular phone and Stuff like that. It's it's pretty uh, effective. Oh, here we go. We're live on the, the screen share. We're, we're live on the screen share for anybody. John will read it off for anybody just listening and not watching. All right. Do not say to people that have not texted you back yet. So like uncontacted sellers and you're trying to engage with them. The words interested, selling, offer, property, cash, local investor, purchase, looking, mortgage, loan, insurance, debt, and lend. I feel it's like the these motherfuckers other... are like just geared to our business. Yeah, what, really, about, really right? what about warranty? How come I don't see what car warranty a couple, on there? A couple questions. So, uh, what if your company name has, what if you're saying who you are in your auto response yeah. message and it has cash or offer or. Yeah, mine has both. So I'm fucked. <laughs> yeah. I, you do still have to say your company name like that as a part of A2P. So I, I don't have the guidance on that. Uh, but these words are definitely kind of being flagged and being watched um by yeah. by the the powers that be that made all these rules so there there is a lot there's a, a a huge list of words these are the ones specifically that i that are picked out for real estate investing um oh, okay. so there are other things like warranty and stuff in there but i just pulled out what is it that an investor is most likely to go into say um 
so yeah, these messages will set off spam filters and block your messages. So if you yeah. got a new lead in and you're texting them, like doing the double tap, you call and then you text, don't say these words um, because it, it will not be good for you. I feel like it's in like Ocean's Eleven where they're they're trying to break into a you know a bank or something like that, and there's all those red lasers that you can't hit or the alarm goes off. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. That's what it's like oh, yeah. texting. Yeah. These yeah, days. I live that. In, I live that in real life. That's you do my life. That's, uh, my, that's my oh. that's my life, bro. All the obstacles, just like. Um, what is one? Yeah, that's, I mean, even branded. But a lot of people have have offers or cash or something in their name. Yeah, like my name is Real Offers Cash. I've also been thinking about changing the name, you know, as a result of all this, like because it's so my name is so spammy. It may not be it may not be the best, but I don't know. But but again, for follow ups, it's more about. Like what I've always been saying is like, I've never believed in the text messages because I can never wrap my head around, you know, the generalization of it. Yeah. But like, we just have a follow-up specialist that just dials like, so we'll resurface our leads based on a certain number of days. And, and I may not be as good at it as everybody else, but it's like, I know everyone else is like very, cause I was helping, I was helping a younger guy out and he was talking about like, oh man, if this is, if this is dead and when i say dead i don't mean like never gonna call it again we use dead in a mm -hmm. different term as in like it's out of my salesman's purview and into mm -hmm. my admin now which our admin is like our follow-up specialist so when it goes dead like i'll wait so if someone says no i decided to keep it i'm not calling them in two weeks and like i know guys who will i'll wait four months or three months like six months especially on the depending on the type of lead that it is so on cold like predominantly a lot of our stuff was cold call leads so we're already like nine months 12 months out from really pinning them down there's a lot of follow-up with those people when they say they're not keeping it you're nine months or 12 months out from them really considering because a normal cold call lead could be three to six months mm -hmm. then you have someone who's not even ready now add another three to six months onto that now you're at the nine to 12 months thing so if i get you on my first call and you say nah you know i know i talked to them but me and my husband spoke again last night and we're really thinking about keeping it you know we're not ready to move yet whatever it is i'm not following up with them in two weeks Mm -hmm. that's not that type of lead. So we'll resurface them. And then our follow up specialists will touch base with them in what could be six months or nine months, or just depending on what it is. Um, and we have different categories of those follow ups, but we do all follow ups by phone and we have smartphone where all of our phone numbers are geolocated. So like we'll have, depending on the States that you're in, like we'll have a phone number for almost every state. I'm not nationwide, like some companies. So it's easier to do that. Um, and that's our follow up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, uh Getting somebody outside of door knocking and talking to a person face to face, manually calling somebody on the phone is the the best form of yeah. follow up. Bro, dude, did I tell you? So I was so I bought this land. Well, I didn't buy it, but I wholesaled this piece of land in Lakeland to a buddy of mine who's a builder, and there's a lot next to his. And so this guy, you know, they're always the guys who are like, man, like you know, your word is your bond type thing. Mm -hmm. So he promised me he would sell me the lot next door when I bought this one, yada, yada, yada. So I bought this one, wholesaled it off. And so I'm calling this guy, not just because I want to buy his lot, but now we have a survey issue I need to clear up with him on a fence line. And it's not a big deal if he sells me this lot. Call him, doesn't pick up. Call him, doesn't pick up. Called his wife, doesn't pick up. What is a motherfucker? Like he always used to pick up for me whenever like we were going through the transaction, always or returned my call with a voicemail from him to let me know he called me back. Mm -hmm. Nothing. You know what I did? I door knocked him. Nice. He was so fucking surprised because I didn't leave. So I door knocked, he didn't answer. Door knocked, he didn't answer. Door knocked, he didn't answer. Door knocked, his dog started barking. Door knocked again. Dog barking, I heard him moving. Door knocked again. He opened the file. Bro, I was just... Like, I know you're fucking in there, dude. Like, you were just you standing on the doorstep the whole time. I just stood on his fucking porch because his car's here. He doesn't work. I know this motherfucker's inside. I hear a dog loose. Like, I'm not leaving. Now he opens his door. Oh, he doesn't feel well. He saw me calling, but he's, you know. But, like, I was calling him for, like, two fucking weeks or more trying to get a hold of him. Meanwhile, I got my buyer, the builder, who's like, bro, I need this fence line taken care of. So door knocking works. Like, they are shocked. Oh, yeah. When you just show up because they're dodging your calls and then you're just like, ha, I'm on your doorstep. What's Especially in 2023. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's hilarious. Like when, like when I grew up as a kid with like house phones or, 
before you even needed like an area code, you just go knock on your neighbor's door. Hey, can so and so come play football? My or, neighbor used you know, to whatever. do that shit all the time to me. He would just pop in and just be like, "Hey, you want to play?" And I didn't like him. I used to hide behind the couch when he would come. <laughs> so he would <laughs> you could resonate. Head. You could resonate with yeah. this guy then. Yeah. yeah. No, because we had like. Because we were up on a hill, so like he could see him through like we had like glass like patio doors and stuff, and like I would see him coming. Like I hope Michael's not listening, but bro, like I'm sorry, you were younger. Yeah, you know, when you have a younger neighbor and you're older, like there's mm-hmm. two, three years of difference. You're just too cool to play with this kid. Mm-hmm. I'd be like hiding behind the couch, it's like no, I don't want to come out and play, bro. Like stop it. That's so funny. Oh, uh, that was how it it's was. funny. Like the I've seen like the the whatever the instagram videos of like when people knocked back in the 90s like oh my god somebody's here it's so exciting let's go answer the door yeah. see who it is I and s- now I it's like people story. knock and yeah. it's like run hi you're like yeah, it's like you're like, you're like mute you're like mute the tv everybody's like here like against like a window like make sure <laughs> are you expecting somebody did you invite yeah. somebody over and person? you're like I mouthing you so you can't hear it you're like we've done that <laughs> we have actually done that in our house yeah oh yeah i mean you just don't know um, but door knocking definitely works. It's not always possible, um, yeah. given the way we market. And I didn't, mm-hmm. I didn't want to get out of my comfy little office and go down to this guy's phone. I just wanted to pick up his phone so we could fucking talk and he wouldn't mm-hmm. do that. So I had to go door knock. So, well, you didn't catch whatever he wasn't feeling good about, but did you solve the, the, the fence issue? I got to go back down there. It's not solved. <laughs> I mean, he's just. He just needs to. He just needs to sign the paperwork on that other lot, and then it'll be fucking solved. But I'm waiting for an. I'm waiting for somebody to die. Apparently, so it's a long. It's a long fucking story. It's way not even important for this context. But you know how it goes. Like it's just one thing after another. But mm-hmm. it's okay. He knows I'll find him. Mm-hmm. I'm like that. I'm like that crazy girl on what is it? Wedding Crashers. I will find, I'll find you. you. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna go Liam Neeson from from Taken. Yeah. 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 That's a good one. Good stuff. That's exciting, man. And like we like we've said, man, it's like you're taking a lot of action just dialing up these mobiles. Like it's like cutting mm-hmm. stones. Like sometimes you don't see the big result until the hundredth cut into a stone, like Tony Robbins says. You're taking yeah. a good action. I think good things are coming for sure on that, specifically on that front. Yeah, I'll get there. Yeah. I'll get there. I uh well, do, any more A two P or texting. No, no, that was all the the news. No, that was good things. stuff though. That was yeah. good stuff, and I'll let you know when I get approved. Um, yeah, but that's what, important, what, man. What works for you getting through? I uh, next week I will work on some more kind of official like recommendations, uh, postings of what I continue to learn. But website opt-ins and what you text when seller hasn't texted you back seem to be the most important once you get approved. Approved. Because uh, what will happen is if they question you, they'll say, hey, here's the seller. Prove how they said they wanted to, um, you to text them. And if you can't prove that by showing them, here's this website submission with this person's information, um, and they check the box to be text. And I'm actually working on a feature in Investor Fuse to bring that over now. Nice. Um, and so if they haven't opted in for text messages, I'll just block it inside of the app. Because I, I spoke to one of our big customers and they're like, man, we, we text people all day. It's like just a natural instinct. How, how will we ever know that this person shouldn't be texted? And I was like, I'll block it for you automatically. Don't worry. <laughs> it's just, it's like, it's one of those things. What's that old thing? It's like one person ruins it for the many. And listen, yeah. I know it's yeah. not one person, but I feel like this industry and like maybe the auto warranty industry has really fucked the rest of businesses. So like our property management company, so we're switching, we use Yardy Breeze and we're switching mm-hmm. over to Rent Manager, which is a more high tech type of thing, like a more tech savvy. And they offer yeah. texting. So Brittany got off the phone with them and we're not allowed to text our fucking tenants because of this new compliance thing and because we don't have a specific, so we have a real evative website, which has a tab for property. Mm, It's not the the same business name. It's not the same business name with an opt in. So we can't even mass text our tenants with, you know, maintenance, whatever it is, right? Maintenance, payments, late payments, you know, updates. We can't do that. And we're not even spamming. We're just trying to get hold of people that live in our buildings and we can't even do that as a result of this. And it's so crazy. It's, it ha- 
it has severely messed up. And Brittany had messaged in, in on the chat here and she said, yeah, we're using our old office phone, which we stopped using because we use all VOIP. We have mm -hmm. wiped the dust off of this fucking thing, adapted, <laughs> and we're now using an old phone that thankfully I never let her cancel. So. <laughs> oh, one more thing on not sort of A2P re related, but yeah. all smartphone customers must submit a business profile uh, yeah. in their trust center by next Friday. Uh, just throwing that out there. If you're an investor use customer, you can see messages. If you're a smartphone customer, they're probably already blasting you. Um, but if you don't do that, you won't even be able to call. And again, same thing, people ruin it for the rest of us. Like they're having problems with people signing up for smartphone accounts that aren't real estate investors, aren't legitimate businesses, and they're, they're spamming. And so they're making everybody put in the legal information. So if you don't do that by next Friday, you don't have, I mean, if I don't know why you wouldn't want to text. You don't have to go and register a campaign, but you won't even be able to call or use smartphone if you don't have the business profile filled out, which is like your business legal information. Right. I'm going to find a way to go buy a basket bin full of burner phones and somehow automate mass dialing off those things so I could continue to spam people. I really think it'd be curious. Like I want, if there's somebody out there who's like, I'm, this is a huge pain in the butt. I'm having so many troubles and they're like, I'm just going to buy a Verizon business phone. I want to see if you can text from the get go. Yeah. And I, I can, like we were talking really? last week, it's like, I wonder if this is the carriers trying to get business. Yeah. That's what I meant. Like our office pocket. phone yeah. is, a, is our Verizon cell phone yeah. for the business. Yeah. I mean, we text off of it all the time. I just hated using it because it was like I couldn't control it. Like I could, mm -hmm. the, I could track everything on the VOIP. So, like, yeah. I, I agree with you. Like, it's getting to a point where I'm like, should I just get like another cell phone and just start dialing fuckers off of this thing? Get one for each state. I just got like multiple of like a, you know, people a tactical belt, but instead of guns and on like <laughs> ammo, it'll just be like cell phones. I got one for Arkansas, Florida, Kansas, fucking Georgia. I'm just like, ha ha. <laughs> What happens if both of them are ringing? They're ringing. I'm like, yeah, that'd be pretty. Funny. I don't know. I mean, I, I agree with you. I just it, it really has hindered our business, and I don't mean yeah. it hasn't. The funny thing is, it hasn't hindered our marketing. Mm -hmm. it hasn't. I mean, because I don't SMS text. It has not yeah. stopped our marketing. It has actually stopped our real non-spamming business. Right. So they have failed to stop who I spam, and they continue to hinder. The people that actually want to talk to me. Yeah, to yeah it's not like you're trying to upsell your tenants. You're just like trying to help them out with like they're fixing their <laughs> yeah. toilets and. Yeah, I'm just trying to get a toilet fixed, bro. Yeah, we're trying to not trying to, ups, not trying to upsell you into another unit or something. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Is there a, as as we're kind of wrapping up the texting stuff? Is there any more texting regulations coming in the near future, or is this kind of it? And once people get everything set up with their business lines and the 10 dlc and everything like any is there anything in the near future that's on the horizon or like once we get past this we're like good for a little bit nothing has been announced but like i, I don't see this stopping and that's kind of like the the fear out there of the kind of vendor world that I, i'm in is yeah. like this is you know some writing on the, the wall and, and I, when i was speaking to that bigger um investor fees customer this week I, I told them i was like you know we're at the point where you have to do everything the way these regulations are like don't try to fly under the radar don't try to not do them like you have to do it and adapt your business otherwise you'll get completely shut off and, and things yeah. so i can't i mean in my mind i'm like how more restrictive can they get but what i think will start to occur is okay everybody's registered and using it and now what will start to happen are people like oh i'm getting shut down for this reason and we'll kind of learn that as a collaborative real estate investor world and, you know, from that, there'll be a guidance of, okay, well, here's how we need to start changing our messaging to make sure yeah. that we're, you know, able to continue to text people. Um, that's what I think is kind of the next step. But I, I don't know how they could get re more restrictive, but I don't, I don't put it past them to come up with something. Well, yeah, I don't know if it would be like fines or like more fines levied out. But what Papa P was saying is like, that was one of the main bullet points or takeaways from the Launch Control Real Estate Disruptors podcast of like, you know, one person kind of ruining it for everybody. So they're <laughs> pretty much the main messaging. Around. The main messaging yeah, from that was floundering. don't let everybody, you know, don't act, have bad behavior texting because you're going to root for everybody and then get into other marketing channels like inbound <laughs> was their yeah. takeaway for how to, how to survive texting. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. But yeah, I mean, 
everybody listen to John's messages. If you're investor fuse customers, smartphone customers, please take those actions well before September 15th or whenever the the deadline yeah, is. Yeah, that, that September to... 15th deadline is specifically for smartphone customers. If you want to continue to call, you must put in your business profile information. You should go all the way and can do all the ATP process. Yeah. Uh, but you must have submitted and completed your business registration, business profile by Friday, September 15th. Um, and then, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see what goes on. I there. think, you know, Carlos had me watch uh, the real estate disruptor, Sean Terry yes. uh, podcast, and he had been asked a question about regulation or what the future of the industry looks like. And he kind of resonated with what I, I, I personally think and kind of what we've talked about before is I think regulations are going to come in and it's actually going to help us because it's going to, and he had said it in a way where it's like, not just going to help us, but it's, it's going to limit the way uh, people could do business. So maybe instead of wholesaling, you have to actually close on your deal, right? Like mm -hmm. buy it, double close, have the funds, take it down, list it or sell it to your buyer same day after you physically have the capital, which means that there's a higher barrier to entry. Anytime there's a higher barrier to entry, competition is less. You can actually make more money to do it, which then actually hurts the consumer. I see this kind of like as the phone regulations come in and limit what people can do on texting. And again, we're not, I'm not even talking about spamming right now. I'm just literally talking about like your follow-ups, your regular stuff. Yeah. You tie that in with regulation in the wholesale industry to begin with of where wholesaling may at some point become more illegal, where maybe novations, double closing, those are the things that you have to do, which means you can't fly under the radar. Novations, like especially the way Eric Brewer pitches it and all them is like, you really have to be upfront with what you're doing. There's so many documents that are being signed the hustler and fly by night inexperience you have to have a tc to handle these things you have yeah. to have the proper training to be able to explain them you need the relationships to be able to do it. it's not that it no only a few people could do it i mean anyone can but there's a higher barrier again so once you start coupling that style of regulation in with the phone regulations and i think our barrier to entry into market and to follow up with people becomes more costly and it limits who could do it i think it'll wind up opening it up to a certain demographic of investor that is a larger scale more professional we're having our business profile right is not something scared of like we're scared right. of whereas before we were really scared you're dropping rvms you're dropping text you're really scared that you may get in trouble if they find out what business you are and someone comes knocks on your door you're getting sued right i've been sued for uh for violating the do not call registry right like you're worried about that like so but now you're following all these laws. You're paying maybe more money for the way texting is. You're higher. You got the opt-ins on your TV ads, your radio ads, like the way people call in. Now you have like a a pre-recorded message, right? Yeah, handling your opt-in. Which again, if you're a professional company doing everything where you're actually buying it, you're not wholesaling it, you're double closing it, you're novating it. These things don't matter to you. But again, it all costs money to do. You have to be well capitalized. And then the funny thing is, which again, I'm stealing this from Sean Terry. That was my opinion. But then Sean Terry added in where he's like, all these regulations, they end up hurting the consumer. Right. Because right. by reducing competition, you're reducing the amount of offers. One of the mm -hmm. things that as any wholesaler knows where we've been fucked with is, oh, well, two other guys offered me, well, well, like this one property I'm offering on. We had talked to him and he's like, it's the Zillow says it's worth like 389, 400K. He's like, well, a guy came by and we were at like 300. We were going to novate it. And the guy's like, well, I had a guy come by and he said it's worth 410. <laughs> he said, Did he say he was going to pay it? And he says, yeah. But when he left, he said he wasn't sure and he was going to get back to me. He's like, has he gotten back to you? I'm like, no. And I'm like, this fucking asshole's ruining it for everybody. But that stuff stops happening. And now they only have the one choice and now they're like, wait, no other idiot knucklehead has come in. And that happens all the time. These inexperienced people come in, say high prices. I mean, we've done that too, where you just mess up and you say the mm -hmm. wrong price. And then- Wait, are you saying so that's a bad thing or a good thing? Well, it's, it's bad, but it's good for the consumer because it forces me to offer more money. It's bad for okay. me as a wholesaler right now, but- when the regulations come in, those types of people get weeded out. The amount of competition making multiple offers on a property.
goes down, mm-hmm. which becomes bad for them and good for us, so it reverses. Like yesterday, well, we I mean, is it so deal. bad for them? Because like most of the time, those things weren't going through anyways, right? It's, again, we're. I mean, I guess. General. It's. I'm not saying I would have offered 400, but guess what? He got me to tell him instead of 310, maybe I could come up a couple grand. Yeah. Maybe I could come to 315. That extra 510 grand. <clears throat> there was one for land where I was at 10. I could have went up to 20. He got one at 18. And I said, well, you know, my max I told you before was 19. And he's like, oh, you're at 19. <laughs> and he's like, okay. And again, like that starts to go away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because who's it's actually, a general example, but yeah, I'm with general, you. Like general example is yeah. what I'm saying here. Yeah. That level of competition goes away. We didn't have that level of competition in 2016, 17, 15, and all that. Then 2019, 2020, it got crazy. And I think, mm-hmm. so I do think regulation is a good thing. I also, mm-hmm. yeah. So anyway, I think the cell phone stuff will do what John said. It'll pan, it'll even out. And I think mm-hmm. it'll make it where it'll be a higher barrier to entry. I think SMS texting marketing will die. I think it'll be a lot more inbound, which is more expensive. I think the business profile, having a brand, professional, all that, I think that'll become the most important thing, more institutionalized buying. But on a localized level, I don't mean on the hedge fund level. I mean on a localized, institutionalized, I mean professional. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's almost like, it's re, like everything's resetting to like how it was. Yeah. You yeah. Know. Before COVID and then uh, before texting. Everything thing, right? goes full cycle. How many mm-hmm. times have you heard that happen? Everything. Mm-hmm. Dude. But I thought that podcast was very good, Carlos. I did. And that was my one takeaway when they were talking about the future of it. I had an aha moment. I was like, yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. I think that I think it will happen like that. Maybe not mm-hmm. today, but over the next few years. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it was a great podcast. I appreciate you, you guys checking that out. Um, Probably his best one. Yeah, it was it, it was just cool because Sean Terry's the man. It's definitely OG. a little nostalgic because that's how I that was my first assignment from Dan was listening to Sean Terry's podcast to learn it. Oh, really? You know, Ten years ago, um, it was awesome too. I mean, he was on Investor Fuse for a good bit of time, so me and Dan went to his office before and was like showing his team how to use it. He mentioned in the podcast of like after one of the the failures or time he quit, he's like, "Yeah, I switched to another CRM, a, a long time uh, CRM that's been around." Um, but he didn't mention he left investor fuse. I was like, oh man, that would have been nice to just sit on investor fuse. But it was cool. I mean, a couple bullet point things. I'm gonna start with something Papa P brought up earlier is Sean Terry. And again, like this is a very like transparent and humbling thing because he's one of the most well known uh wholesaling people yeah. the last 10, 10 plus years. Yeah. And he's talking about how Instagram is bad for yeah. people missing out and the perception that it gives people of which you, which you don't even realize it, which is so interesting about the mind. Like so much, mo- most of the stuff going on in your head is, is subconscious. You don't know what's going on. Yeah. But if you're seeing all this stuff, hundreds of people a day of, oh man, I did this check or like Pop P talks about like, oh, I raised $10 million for my 400, 400 unit apartment. And this is, I'm just adding this to my portfolio. Yeah. Sean Terry is even feeling the negative effects of that. And he's yeah, a massive, that. <laughs> you know, so imagine somebody that's been whole, trying to wholesale their first deal for six months texting and cold calling now they got to deal with this like it's it's probably to the yeah. 100th degree for that person so i agree and, and i feel similarly with instagram uh i definitely take it off my phone not necessarily for that but just like kind of living in the real world and not i haven't know. been on instagram in a month i think i deleted it because i was feeling that too yeah it's just <laughs> like man living in the real world and and the focus like be a focus mm-hmm. on your on yourself but i i definitely know the benefits and i go on and off it but it was it was pretty cool and humbling to hear Sean Terry talk pretty much making the point that Papa P was talking about to start this uh, yeah. this episode. So it's good and you can connect with people, yeah. but you know, focus on you and shout out to Papa P for keeping it real on there. I mean, like Papa yeah. P's like, hey, I have this park, I'm you know turning and have tenants in, but I'm getting rejected on these offers and still. I really thought I was everything. getting that one. <laughs> really thought yeah. I was getting that one, but um, yeah, and you know the other humbling thing, so like. I, I did I never knew who Sean Terry was until a couple of years ago. Like that's not again. I lived in a very really a couple of years ago, bro. Never, never. You got to understand. Like me. I didn't even understand the concept of like going out there and listening to people. Everything I learned was mm. self taught or like from somebody here local in the market. Because back in two oh nine, like we didn't have all that shit. And then, like, yeah. I just grew accustomed to talking to people locally, figuring it all out. It wasn't until I got into the wholesale Instagram space, 
you know, 2017 ish that I actually heard of who he was. But like you, there's immediate respect because the motherfucker goes all the way back to like 2003 or something. And it's like anybody, and it goes to that ultimate philosophical question I always speak of. And I was asking Steve Trang when he was on is like, what matters more money or experience? And like, to me, it's experience. Cause I think that outweighs money any day of the week, oh, yeah. especially yeah. if they know how to make money with that experience. But, um, and Sean Terry has that in spades because going back to what I was saying, what I took from it was with that experience that I respect was the humbling aspect of how many times he thought to quit, mm -hmm. but didn't. Mm -hmm. And that's the important thing. It's not that he, no one gives a shit that you think to quit matters whether you do or not. And the fact right. that like he admitted that he was like three times, like even as most recently as like 2019 when he was mm -hmm. gonna, and then he started talking to Nick Perry and then he, to do national. And even after that, like he was failing at national mm -hmm. like wholesaling because he was trying to dispo himself, right? Which is different now. Now you don't even have to dispo yourself. But in 2019, we didn't have the JV so partner. Good. Yeah, the yeah. Disc, I'll dispo your deal. Like, so the cycles and markets change so much that just because it's easy for you today doesn't mean us who were doing it before, we didn't have those same benefits. So Sean Terry trying to nationwide dispo all by himself. Now I saw Nick post that he'll, J, he'll dispo your deal nationwide for you. So you mm -hmm. don't even need a dispo team. And the fact that he went through that and thought about quitting, I was like, damn, like, here's this guy who's been in it that long. And like, he thought about stopping wholesaling, not quitting real estate. At that point, it wasn't quitting real estate. It was quitting wholesaling. The yeah. other two times was about quitting real estate. Cause bro, that one comment where he was like on the hook, where he had like a three, four million dollar deal. He was flipping for twelve million or something, and like the day the people was backed out. Closed, I was like, "Wait, what? Is this one house or is this like an apartment?" This was a development deal in Arizona okay. in two thousand. I'm gonna mess it up. Two thousand seven um, from a big developer, and the market was crashing, and they just didn't close. And he was gonna make like whatever it was, two, three, four mil, like mm -hmm. himself off the deal. And then like that fell. Could you imagine that? I mean, I've had deals fall out. That's a big not, deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not a twenty thousand or fifty thousand dollar assignment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that was like the first, the first step that now in hindsight or Monday morning quarterbacking, it's like, oh crap! Like the the market was going to take a tank. I, I had a bunch of takeaways. Um, I think it's interesting, and like I think everything happens for a reason, for sure. But it's interesting, like he had some failures from the market crashing. He wasn't like super knowledgeable on everything going on. Like he talked about like quantitative easing and housing affordability, like the meter that he talked about. And uh, that really gave him a good positioning and understanding of market cycles and when to ramp right. things up or when to analyze to do a different strategy or the, the bit like think about you know, your big play, which I think is a pick, applicable for anybody that listens to that podcast. You can do some reflecting and think about like, what's a big play I can make in my life, depending on what's going on right now. Kind of skating to the puck, if you will, yeah. is the uh, term. So for you guys, just to jam on, Sean Terry is very bearish on the real estate market coming up for a few factors. Some, I think Papa P would probably, be, probably know the best, but some of them was the housing affordability meter which pretty much like on the scales of example, he said like, I think like 100 or 120 is like really, really good when houses are really affordable. And then 70 is like when it's really, really bad. And right now, or at the time of that episode a couple of weeks ago, it was at 65. Mm -hmm. So it's essentially really, really hard to get into a, you know, a loan to get a house. But what he's starting to see, which is I think before the Steve Drang episode that Papa P shared with us, was like Zillow and other companies essentially making it more easy to get mortgages is kind oh, of yeah. what, what, what happened as, as well, where it's like, hey, let's get unqualified people into mortgages, but then the market's going to go down. So these people are paying mortgages for houses that aren't as valuable. They're paying, yeah. you know, debt or loan on yeah. a 450 house that's now worth 400, for yeah. example. Um, and then the quantitative easing as well and then also the stock indicator so he just has so much stuff that he's What's quantitative easing uh quantitative easing is what the fed does as they're trying to relieve the pressure from from the economy essentially mm -hmm. it's the how they're lowering raising interest rates um 
you know, quantitative tightening is raising, easing is lowering, but yeah. Mm -hmm. So between all those things, I I kind of imagine Sean Terry, just from the experiences he's gone through, he's almost like Tom Cruise in Minority Report or or Iron Man, like moving stuff around. He has all these different indicators. Yeah. Yeah. He has the housing affordability, the stock market, what the Fed is doing. It's true though. It's true though. And like, I made a post because I saw a fucking, what's his name from Bigger Pockets? Guy's a fucking idiot. But like, he's got a platform and he's like, house prices isn't going down. I don't see it happening. And it's like an R, and I made a post like, and I was refuting it. I'm like, I, all I do is watch the market. I'm, I may not be, you know, the biggest investor out there, but like, I literally, while dialing and hunting things, I'm combing the fucking market Mm -hmm. i get alerts to my phone for everything local market vacation markets i'm seeing price drops all over the place Mm -hmm. all over the place one of my house not on my house on my street dropped a hundred thousand dollars after sitting for months i'm seeing things sit and drop multiple times i've seen new builds drop multiple times and the funny thing is, is when they do it, it's like, I'll get like seven alerts because they'll have like seven houses on one street. And they're like, price drop, price drop, price drop. I'm like, ah, fucker, get your cookie cutter out of here. But like, and again, now I was talking to a buddy of mine. There's still areas that are not declining, mm-hmm. right? You're, you're highly sought after areas. I don't think people with money are hurting. Um, but I think the average median consumer, 100%. I agree with Sean Terry and that guy in bigger pockets is retarded. I don't know what data he's looking at, but prices are 100% declining because they are unaffordable. Doesn't matter if we yeah. don't have supply. So everyone uses supply as their reasoning. Yeah, but the nobody's going to buy because they're interested. If you don't have like, fucking yeah. money, you mm-hmm. can't buy it, bro. You could have two houses supply on the market, but decreasing. if I don't have a fucking demand. nickel to demand. rub together, demand. yeah. And so that's the thing. And so like, I do agree with Sean Terry, I think, and we've talked about it before. Like I have told family members, like I'm not a financial advisor, but I have advised them, like protect your assets, get out of the stock markets. I I definitely think it's coming. You can't predict when, but Sean Terry was saying 15 to 18 months from earlier this year. So he's saying like the beginning of is when mass layoffs, this whole thing was happening. He's saying he believes mass layoffs are gonna happen, right, Carlos? Yep. Yeah, and also predicting a black swan event, whether it's another wave of COVID or some type of uh, already natural disaster, that, or you, yeah, you, you can kind of taste taste something is going on or sense something is going yeah. on. Yeah, whether They're it's COVID or some type of it. Earth thing that happens with the climate or food shortage, or there's some strings that they could you you, know, you pick it, bro. Is it yeah. going to be a fucking laser fire cause where if you're not blue, you die? Is mm-hmm. it going to be a toxic spill in a river? Is it going to be a chicken coop caught on fire, a dairy farm cart caught on fire? I don't know. What's it going to be? We're not going to be able to buy toilet paper anymore. Is it going to be a mass mandate, a shutdown? Like they have pulled out all the fucking stops, dude. Mm-hmm. So you could pick. But I have read that. Uh, they're talking about another shutdown for pandemic. I read that there was a couple places already mandating masks. Um, mm, yeah. I know DeSantis, in California, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I love how you just knew that. Yeah. Bruh. Where else but fucking California? That's where it's going to start. Somebody needs to just like take a giant fucking saw and just cut that motherfucker off the u.s and let it drift into the fucking ocean and let all the heathens (laughs) fucking just wither in their sin and just leave us the fuck alone okay and stop coming to our states just go um (laughs) but yeah i i don't i i agree with you i think that could be the black swan i think that could be it that causes the layoffs that sean terry talks about that then causes the supply to come that then causes people to not be able to afford to buy that supply. Um, I've been saying we did a podcast a year ago about credit card debt, you mm-hmm. know, and living paycheck to paycheck. It's gotten even worse. Mm-hmm. Yep. So Don't the worry. big the big play off that with Sean Terry anticipating this, which I mean, I trust his his judgment for how much he watches the market and he's been through yeah. through that stuff for. So he's like a hawk watching all this stuff. His big play is potentially, or just an idea of his, was the upcoming foreclosure market. Because if all these jobs lay, if all the, all these job layoffs happen, 
all these people need to sell or they can't pay their mortgage, then there's an influx of inventory that comes in. And that's when the people that are either have the specialized knowledge in acquisitions or the systems and processes set up to do real estate acquisitions or the knowledge to do stuff subject to or other things creatively, which is something I want to ask you about, Papa P, from from towards the beginning of that episode. Those people are positioned. So I think that's that's definitely a big play. Everybody's everybody's been kind of waiting on a foreclosure thing since the first COVID when they kicked the, the, um, yeah, the can they down kicked, the road. The, yeah. They kicked the can down the road on that. So, I mean, that's, it's, it that's is happening. Way. Like I know investors that are doing really well with foreclosures right now Yeah, in certain markets. Um, so I agree. I think that's a big play. Um, I was going to ask you too, Papa P what did you think about, I thought it was interesting where he was talking about how he first built up a really big portfolio in the beginning. I think, was that the first, yeah, that was the first. The first trailer like where he built up like 150 rental portfolio yeah, sold, of sub two properties them. before okay. sub two was this was a, yeah. you know, yeah. he, he a well known thing. Made a shit ton of money, and that's when he got into the land, and that's when he lost everything. Yeah, so I thought that was interesting too, and that towards the end of that episode, and then it sounded like that's something that is a potential big play if you want to build up like a sub two portfolio, whenever this influx of you know foreclosures comes in. Yeah, the or something I think that's. I think that's definitely the case. The problem is, is like the equity, like he also made a statement that he thinks that the difference is there'll still be equity. I don't necessarily believe that. I believe in a bigger event happening than what he was saying. I don't believe there will be equity. I believe the housing market will correct. Um, It's just, it's, it's nature. Mm -hmm. And my belief, again, I'm just, it's more uh, not stats driven. Like I don't have graphs to reference or data to reference. To me, it's just, it's just nature. What goes up must come down. I mm-hmm. feel like there's too much, too much glutton out there. Like it needs to be cleansed. I think we're going to have a very drastic hit. Um, but here's a couple tips is like, so I survived the last one. I didn't survive it cause I wasn't in it before, but I made a shit ton of money. Uh, if you're a realtor, sign up with every company that does servicing, you could do BPOs for them. That was a huge thing. I was doing like 300 BPOs a month. I had a whole team doing them. That was the first thing. If you're an agent, you could sign up, you have to pay, but you could sign up for a lot of our uh, REO platforms to try to get in with the servicing companies and the banks. I don't think the banks do it so much like they did back in the day. I think they all use servicing companies now, the way technology is. Is. So like you could definitely sign up. Same thing, hedge funds and large portfolio holders use these servicing companies and they're going to need to be revaluing their assets, which means they're going to be ordering BPOs or selling them off, which then they look for agents in their territories and their software to sell them. That was how I made a lot of money was being an REO agent. So like there's definitely ways short sale becoming proficient in short sales and trying to do that. Um, there's many ways as an agent that you can make money, even as an investor, if you partner with agents. Um you know, well, I guess you could technically help them as with a short sale, even if you're not a realtor, if you're the end buyer and you have their approval, you could technically do that. So there's lots of ways to survive those types of things if you have the skill set, which again goes to my, what I'm saying is like, it gets rid of a lot of people because you do need to be skilled, mm-hmm. not just yeah. being able to spam people and, and grab it. You have to know how to handle a transaction mm-hmm. or be a licensed agent to handle it. And the banks don't just pick anybody. The banks do not just pick anybody. They're going to want to see the experience. They're going to want to see that you have the ability to handle their assets. Um, so, special advice. Good advice. I remember when uh, the other co founder of Investor Few started wholesaling, he bought a program. So, this is maybe 2009, 2010. So, I guess like shortly after the, the 08 cycle. REO yeah. Rockstar by Preston Neely, yeah. if you're familiar yeah. with that. I never did it, Let's but say, I heard, I've heard, so, I've heard, but yeah. So that would be interesting from, from your perspective, if you were, you know, back in the day, if you were doing REOs where you would work with a wholesaler, that's essentially just bringing in a, like, you know, wholesaling your property to an end buyer. Uh, no, if I was an REO agent, what I, would I do? Is that what you're saying? No, no, no. I'm saying it would, I'm just making a statement that that'd be an interesting perspective of working with a wholesaler to sell that deal. Like for you as yeah. the REO agent. Yeah, but you wouldn't, I mean, I would double end it, but yeah, I mean, you would definitely be double ending it with a wholesaler, but I mean, I ended up selling to wholesalers without knowing that I was selling. That's what I think the majority is, is, is happening. Yeah, I, did, I like, didn't know what a wholesaler was back then. Yeah. I was legitimately, I had no <laughs> fucking idea what a wholesaler was. Um, I remember I had a guy back out of one of my deals and I, I now know he's a wholesaler because I've run into him. 
but I didn't know this was like 2013. I didn't know he was a wholesaler and he gave me the line like, Hey, um, you know, we can't go forward. You know, we decided to only buy these other two properties and not yours. So we don't have enough funds in the bank account to buy all three of them. And I believed him. I was pissed. And then I understood. He just never found a buyer for it. I didn't know I was selling to wholesalers, but yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like a lot of the, uh, the RAO agents probably don't know who they're, who they're yeah. actually working with. Which is funny. But anyway, those are ways that you could definitely make some money. Um, I think in the market, there's definitely going to be stuff to do. But I'd watch the Sean Terry app for sure. Um, I made my, I sent it to my wife and she watched it. She liked it too. It was a very motivational thing. And just showing you that even, even those types of people have doubts with what they're doing sometimes. And you just got to keep pushing forward and, and obviously keep it going. And, you know, obviously it worked out for him. Um, and yeah. he's still pushing. So, but those are the type of people you want to learn from. Like what bothers mm -hmm. me is like, I don't want to learn from the people who only like everyone mistakes this. And this is just my opinion, but it's like, I struggle. I become rich. I now use my earlier struggle to sell the people to listen to me because I'm rich now. No, because you haven't struggled every, let's just, I just want to clear the air. 99% of people struggle before they're successful. That does mm -hmm. not, no matter what it is, whether you're from the ghetto, whether you're from a middle-class home, whether you were a drug addict, whether you were a fat person, whatever you had to overcome, everybody in the world had to overcome a similar thing to them in their own universe to make it successful. That doesn't make you special. What makes you special is after you become successful, then failing, then picking yourself up, then succeeding, then failing, picking yourself up, that's called experience. And then when you do it again and again, that turns into wisdom. That's the mm -hmm. difference. And too many fucking people think that, oh my God, this guy started at the bottom. He's rich. Let me buy his course. Fuck that. That's not the guy you want to mm -hmm. learn from. I want to go learn from someone a strategy like he learned 10 years ago and he still thinks it's valid. Exactly. Gonna, I want to learn from Sean Terry. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Sean Terry or somebody who's like, bro, like I succeeded. I made millions. I've lost millions. I did it again. Fuck that up. Had to do it again. Learn from that. That's the person because I see them winning and losing. Yeah. That to me is so, is so very important and somebody that I want to take advice from. I just, I don't, I don't think you struggling in the beginning amounts to anything. I think that's just, I think it's the entry fee. You pay the entry fee to get into the see game, the graph. bro. Keep going. Yeah. So what's he finding success in now? I haven't watched the interview. What's Nothing, he finding he's success in he's now? still doing national wholesaling. Still doing oh, he is stuff. doing national stuff. Well, he's yeah. doing the, what was the acronym? I brought up on the pre-show. It's, it's, it's like RBV I, or RBF. R, RPB, but it's Novations. RPB. Yeah. So we were yeah. talking he's about. He's doing national Novations? He's Nation, nationwide best. Novations? Yeah. You, I don't see why that would be a problem. Um, hmm. they call it the RPB program, but he referred to it. He correlated or compared it to Novation. So I'm assuming that's the same thing, but yes, I'm not hundred percent certain cause I don't pay for that mastermind, but his whole thing was to get them on the MLS. Yeah. And that was mm -hmm. what that is. So I'm pretty sure we were talking about it on Tuesday in our pre-show for all of our listeners wondering why we just hopped off on that little tangent. Carlos and I were trying to figure out what he meant by that. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, and he's just succeeding and getting ready i think he said he's 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 preparing for what carlos was saying about the pre-foreclosure glut that's going to come it's going to mm -hmm. open up yeah very interesting cool we're about out of time here um anything to wrap up on that no we got someone here that says hey how may i donate i don't know if that's legitimate that. I don't know if that's legitimate, legit dash wins. We appreciate you, brother, I'm going to assume. Um, dude, just like and subscribe and forward it off to some people. That'll help us the most. Don't need that the money, but we do need the, yeah, we need the likes and the subscribes. <laughs> and send me any mobile home park leads that you got. There you go. There you go. So I will pay a fee. Go. I will pay a fee. All right, guys. Very cool. All right, well, we'll see you all next Lock and week. load. Have a Next great week. weekend, everybody. It's pouring in here in Florida. Is it? Uh, or in, in Orlando, sorry. Not, not The whole state of Florida is not covered by a storm. That would be a black swan event. <laughs> <laughs> Lee out there in the, on the, in the Gulf. No, the Atlantic.
Yeah. I just I need to go eat lunch. Is what I need to do because my brain has stopped functioning. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Right, Lock and load. See you next week. See you guys.